Okay. So college basketball is still kind of in you know the beginning stages, but the NBA has been rather interesting as of late. All that coming up. Welcome to this episode of Basketball Street Beat, episode two. I'm your host, John Barons. I'm Joshua Perkins. Okay, so we still don't really have that much uh, to talk about when it comes to um, uh, college basketball. In fact, some of the big schools have yet to play their first game. It's, I mean, it's still early. Uh, but as far as some of the teams that are in the rankings right now, I mean, Duke still... Dominant, 94-72 win over the Black Knights of Army. Virginia, 76-57 win over George Washington. Michigan State win over Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, Florida State, um, 80-69 win over Tulane. Tulane looks like, looked like they put up a pretty big fight against them. LSU put up a win against uh, 97-91. I think it was uh, Greensboro, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's like... Mm. They yeah. do they do have a game uh, against Memphis coming up. I did, I did recognize that, so... Yeah, they actually, it, it's actually tonight. Oh, wow. Uh, so there was a, a women's basketball had uh, Syracuse versus Oregon, and number three versus number 18. That was a pretty close game, uh, 75-73. Okay, so there's been uh, two major matchups so far, it looks like. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, things would get, I would think, more heated and uh, a bit more exciting as we get closer to the new year. I mean, like, it's going to pick up as we get closer into, like, you know, around January, February time. Yeah. Uh, the NBA, on our hand, still... Okay, so Jimmy Butler's traded to the Sixers. That was a blockbuster trade. Now the Sixers have significantly raised their chances of probably come out the East this season. I mean, you got Joel Embiid already. You got Ben Simmons. Now you got Jimmy Butler. And you got Markel Fultz. Yeah. Uh, I mean... I, I still say at this point Toronto's the favorite, even though the Pelicans they just like beat them pretty handedly. That was a surprise. What Pelicans beat the Sixers? No, the, the Raptors. Raptors, really? Yeah, twenty six, one hundred twenty six to one hundred ten. Oh wow! So sixteen point victory. Nice. Um, seems like uh. Let's see, what were what, what the stats for that? Because it seems like every time they win, they have a new lead score. Mm, I think it was more. Let's see. So each one more? Yeah, each one more. Uh, top score, each one more, 30 points. Good Lord. Uh... Like I said, it seems like every time you turn around, New Orleans has a new lead score. Uh, anybody can score. I mean, Andy Davis had 25 points and 20 boards, though. So, Still, I mean. And, new, and the Pelicans are on a three-game win streak. They they start off 4-0. No, they lost six in a row. Now they've won three in a row. I know. That's just kind of weird. I don't know what I don't know what happened to the Pelicans, what they're doing, or I don't know. it's just all points for the Pelicans, just points, 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 and more points. Oh, uh, see, so yeah, yeah, they uh, beat the Suns one nineteen ninety nine, and then uh, before that, it was 
Chicago 107 uh, to 98. I want to say those, those are the two teams they've held under 100 so far. And their next game will be in Minnesota. They're going against the Big Cat, Carl Anthony Towns, and the Timberwolves. Well, yeah. Uh, Timberwolves not doing so great right now. Well, they, they just lost Jimmy Butler. And no, just, they weren't doing them great even with Butler. It's, they're, they're struggling right now. They got to get some things going. Yeah. Uh, this is a team that had lost six straight. Hmm. All right. Let's see. What else is going on in the NBA? Uh, Warriors lost for the second time this year. Yesterday, um, see, they lost to the Clippers. And now... Clippers are some people are like, go oh, Clippers gonna challenge this year. No. Don't 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 even get that in your mind. Nope. Nope. Don't even don't even. You know, and uh, I saw a, a poll yesterday on Twitter, um uh, who, who's the better team and who's the uh king of LA? Is it uh the Clippers or the Lakers? And I was like, I feel like this is a trap question. It's the Lakers. <laughs> oh, and, you know, and the Lakers, they're showing a lot of potential this season. They just, they, they just got to get things. They just got to bring things con- uh, together on a consistent basis. Uh, yeah. Um, they, they, they just broke uh, 500 yesterday or last night. Um, and, I don't know. It's, it's neither LA team is doing particularly well right now. Yeah, I think Cle- Cleveland right now, I believe, is one and eleven. I'm gonna say Cleveland is absolutely terrible without LeBron James. Uh, yeah, and this is a trend I've seen since LeBron was in during his first tenure in Cleveland when he left to go to Miami, and just Cleveland just had a significant drop off, like the most drastic drop off into the doldrums. Yeah, I think Cleveland's probably on pace to win less than 19 games this year. Which probably would not surprise me. You know, we're 14 games into the season. There are already 10 games behind Toronto. (laughs) That's a bad place to start. Come back. (laughs) I don't see a comeback in Cleveland's future. Uh, I don't. I mean, mean, they may be able to get a two-game winning streak in there somewhere. Also... (laughs) <laughs> also the Suns the, the Phoenix Suns are picking up from where they lost off last season they are dead last in the West yeah. despite having Devin Booker Suns need to get it together because I don't see Devin Booker being in Phoenix well no I take that back he signed an extension with Phoenix uh, oh yeah okay he signed I think he signed an extension with him well um, Phoenix is doing somewhat better than Cleveland by like uh like one game yeah, they have two wins. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, Cleveland got one win. Phoenix has two wins. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is just so impressive. And they have one of the best guards in the league, and they're still 2-11. and Yeah, uh, well, here's a team that does have a winning record, and I actually did not expect to have one, and that's Sacramento. They're actually, in, if the playoffs started today, Sacramento will be in the playoffs. Uh, it's a little early for that statement, but you're right. Yeah, it's early. Oh, it's going to change as the season goes goes forward. It's going to change. So you you don't have uh, much uh, hope in Sacramento being a surprise team? No. Nah. Hmm. It's about the same amount of hope that I have in Phoenix being a team that just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <clears throat> And then the Suns, they just lost Tyson Chandler to the Lakers. So you're giving the Lakers more ammo and more fuel. Right now, if the playoffs started today, the Lakers wouldn't even be in the playoffs. They're 7-6 and six right now. And they're tied for ninth place along with the Utah Jazz and the New Orleans Pelicans right now. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I, I mean, I'll say, what's, what's Houston, man? I mean, 5-7. and seven, and It was just, just a team that won 67 games last year. And now, 
now though it's like uh, it's just I, they're just off to a very slow start i mean i see houston making a surge sometime within the, in this season they're gonna make a surge it's just they're having a hard time like really finding their identity right now and then not only that they think carmelo's gonna be done it's probably done in houston how uh, why why doesn't carmelo retire i mean he keeps going to teams that want to compete for a title he's well past his prime uh, he, he only seems to be a distraction where he where he goes as a place. No, that Carmelo doesn't really want to put his pride to the side. I mean, he doesn't. He made it clear he doesn't want to come off the bench. He started his whole fifteen year career until he got to Houston, to where they got him playing a reserve role. He doesn't want to do that. And it's just his pride got the best of him. And if he can just let go of his pride, I feel that he can be a contributing player on a team that wants to win a title. You know, I, I just have to wonder, why the hell didn't he stay with the Nuggets? I mean, it seems like he wasted so much time with New York Knicks. And he really did. Because, you know, like in New York, they ended up giving some help. They ended up bringing in Amari Stoudemire. And, you know, New York, they, they were pretty, I mean, they were a playoff team for, for a little bit of time. But it's just, they had hit like a downhill spiral even when they had even when they got Chris that's Porzingis it's just I feel that him leaving Denver was one of the worst things that could have happened to his career because if he would have never left Denver he probably I mean he probably would have led Denver to greater heights imagine yeah. if he was if he was still in Denver right now yeah I know I mean, Denver's had some pretty good teams over the last years after over the last few years after he left. While well, he's just wasting away in New York with the um, delusion that somehow Phil Jackson could turn the Knicks around. No, Phil Jackson is a good head coach. He's not a good team president. Right. Yeah. I would put him on a court to coach. I would not put him. I would not make him run a front office. See, mm. That's two totally different entities: a coach and the president or GM. See, they run as far as like. Who gets picked up and all the transactions? See, coach, all you gotta do is buy, all you gotta do is worry about the players on on the court, or you know, you got a player coming in, okay. But I mean, Phil Jackson was arguably one of the best coaches ever to ever be on this side. And when they asked him about coaching, he 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 swore up and down he's not coming back to coaching, and he's stubborn about it. Yeah, well, I mean, he he had his time. He, everybody. You know, deserves to retire every now and then. Yeah, had his time. He has about how many NBA titles? I know um, he won six with with Chicago. I know that for sure. I think he has eleven, and he won five with LA. Yeah, he has eleven NBA titles. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, Jesus, that's a lot of NBA. That's that's eleven rings. Where can you put eleven rings? I know you could put ten on one of your fingers. I'm not. I wouldn't wear them all at once. Yeah, <laughs> put them all on us and uh, put them all on and go, knock you go, out. Just, go go uh, brawl somewhere. Oh yeah, and I would win handedly. Uh, it's either you uh, legal, win. legal set of uh, brass knuckles. <laughs> yeah, it's either I mean you win and everything out of self defense, and you know you looked at as a hero, or you lose and you get jacked out of all your rings, including the eleventh one. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so what? You use like um, one ring on all five fingers, and then one on your toe. No, I was thinking, you know, as far as eleventh ring, putting like kind of like a le- necklace and wear it around your neck, or whatever. I think it'd be kind of kind of cool. Ah. So, any surprises so far? Any surprises? Mm. Brooklyn Nets are doing a lot better than I thought. Oh, did you hear about that? Uh, what's his name? That uh, the leg injury? Yeah, I heard he, it was a gruesome ankle injury. Yeah, it was like, and players from both teams held back tears as he was getting carted off. It, it was pretty bad. Uh, I heard the announcers they saying if uh, you know. You're not. You know, it's your fate of heart. Uh, you shouldn't watch the replay. Like it was that bad. Kind of like the Gordon Hayward injury. <clears throat> and that was bad. No, the the worst in, NBA. The worst injury I saw was when Paul George injured, broke his leg, 
at um the um like the USA tryout game, I believe. When he was trying to block a dunk and he just broke his leg. And I saw the replay. It's it's bone chilling. Oh. Oh, uh, I still remember that freak accident where that uh hockey player got his artery split. I didn't see that one. That was uh almost ten years ago now, yeah. Uh, now, I remember when Louisville and Duke went at it in a, in a, a tournament game, and uh, one of their players broke his leg. He went in to try, I believe, to like block a shot, and when he fell, his leg broke. He had an open fracture. And, I mean, it basically, it literally scared the living hell out of some of the Duke players. Yeah, well, that that uh, NHL player, it was um, he got some dude went uh, airborne, yeah, did a flip. And uh, dude, skate caught the guy on the neck. Ooh, uh, barely survived. But the good thing about the good thing is he survived. Yeah, probably not. Probably didn't play again, but he survived. Yeah, which I'd rather survive and keep on playing. But enough about gruesome injuries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you, you brought up the nets, and that just kind of came naturally. Yeah, so it wasn't my fault. I'm talking about the next progression. You want to bring up one of the players. I mean, it happened last night. Yeah, that's true. So, it's kind of unavoidable. True. But, um... Yeah, not, but not much going on. I mean, it, it, basketball season is still young. I would have thought that the Celtics would have been have have been doing a little bit better. They're just kind of sitting at seven and six right now, which is a bit I mean, of a surprise to me. I mean, with, all the, with, with all the playmakers they have, I think they're just trying to like reestablish that that chemistry they had last season. I mean, they they didn't have Gordon Hayward. They only had him for the first game of last season, and after that, he was done for the whole season. They lost Kyrie Irving in the playoffs. And it's like the players they have now, like, you know, like, you know, Jason Tatum and, you know, with, you know, Kyrie Irving and they got Marcus Smart. The players they have now is just they just trying to rebuild chemistry amongst each other, you know, as far as being out there with each other. And what about this? Atlanta, 3-10. and 10. This is a team that just a few years ago was competing for, for top seed in the East. They've hit a massive drop off. I mean, they, I feel I feel that team has a has a has a future ahead of them. I mean, they got Trey Young, who they see as being the face of their franchise. But I mean, as far as Atlanta, that's just a huge mm, scratch on the head. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's not just Atlanta. I mean, Chicago four and ten, Washington four and nine, uh, Miami five and eight. You know, these are all teams. And of course, Cleveland one and eleven. These are all teams that were uh, even last year in the playoffs, are competing for the playoffs. Um, you know, Seventy uh, Sixers. They've made a turnaround from being one of the worst teams in in, in the uh, NBA to now a contender. Uh, Charlotte the Hornets with their um, you know identity crisis, uh, multiple personality disorder i mean but hey they're they're fifth in the east right now oh uh, it's like well, well charlotte is one of those teams that just, i mean does does well one year and is off the next does well in the next year and off the next so. they, they just have cut like, an issue with consistency yes think <laughs> um uh, you know it's i don't know <laughs> and uh I mean, well, you know, the Eastern Conference, a losing, a team with a losing record making the playoffs is not out of the norm. Yeah, Eastern Conference, I mean, because the competition is so weak in the East. Now, in the West, you got to be on your game in the West. Uh. I've always wondered, what's the deal with it? Why is the East Conference just always so top-heavy, yet the West is so competitive? Well, there's a lot more talent in the West. I mean, you look at all the playmakers that are in the West. I mean, I'm not saying, not trying to take anything away from the East, but I just feel that, you know, the the impact of, like, the impact they like that the West has, like the players that the 
the impact that the players have on the West versus the impact that players can make in the East. I mean, it's something that confuses me. It's something that's mind-boggling. It's something that I'm, I'm still trying to, like, look into. But that's a that's a disturbing trend I've noticed over the years. And it's not like that it just happened overnight. It's been like that for, for decades. You have to go back to, I want to say, the 80s before you have that, the, the almost the opposite or, 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 or even a, a balance between the two conferences. But it just seems like this, this league is just off balance where the, the, it's so lopsided in the West. Because even during the 90s when, when Chicago was dominating the scene, uh, it, they didn't have much competition out of the East. Until, until they got into the NBA Finals. And then they, they would probably meet a team like L.A., or well, LA's out of the West. You gotta understand, I'm only 24 years old. <laughs> I'm 24 years old. I'm young. Yeah. I'll, I guess I'll let that one slip. Let that one slide, please. <laughs> okay. I think we've talked about just about all we can really talk about. Uh, this week basketball is looking kind of just a little boring right now but well, I, mean, the, I mean this is gonna pick up soon so y'all just keep listening out it's the collegiate saying this like, we're still slowly getting off to uh off on uh it's like the season for for college is still too young to really have too much excitement yeah i mean it's gonna start picking up sometime Around next month, most hopefully. Around the middle of next month, around Christmas time. Yeah, because right before the holidays is typically when things really start to get going. And it's going to be fun. All right, that has been Basketball Street Beat for this week. Tune in next week with episode three. You can find us on Twitter at AI Sports. Th- at, yeah, AI Sports 3. Facebook, AI Sports Network. Apple Podcast. Just re- search our shows there and you'll find us. Or also AISportsnetwork.com. I'm John Barons. I'm Joshua Perkins. Sign out. Sign out. Bye. <laughs>